Okay, welcome everybody. I'd like to call this meeting of the Southampton Village Planning Board to order April 1st, regular meeting. Um, the first item on the agenda is for the tennis court submission of Douglas Taylor at 101 First Neck Lane. Um, we've reviewed the plans and the landscaping plan looks good, the drainage looks good. The only question um, that I spoke with John Foster about is it, it appears that the proposals for a tennis court in the front yard and they'll have to go to the zoning board before they can come back to the planning board for approval. But otherwise I would recommend, I would recommend approval. So and I can talk to John Foster tomorrow, ask him if we need to refer it or if it can come directly to the, from the applicant. And that's because it's a flag lot and that was originally specified as, as the front it's, yard. Yeah, it, there is no record of where, if they specified that it was a front yard, but because of the way the pool is situated. It has to be. It, it must be, yeah. Okay. So. Okay, any other questions? So do you need, we're going to make a, a motion that, that it would be approved pending the, you're going before the zoning board to get approval of that change? Yes. Do we need a motion on that or we just um, wait until the next of, meeting? Let me, uh, have authorization to write a letter of reference to the Board of Appeals and uh, that way this matter should be held in abeyance um, pending the Board of Appeals determination whether or not a variance is needed. <coughs> so a motion to authorize Council to uh, submit a letter to the Board of Appeals inquiring whether or not uh, the court the proposed tennis court is, is located in the front yard, and if so, um, that uh, the board grant the relief necessary uh, to construct it there. Get a second for that motion? Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, the next item is the uh, Application of Elka LLC for 20 and 22 Hampton Road. Uh, at the last meeting, there was a public comment on this application, and the public comment was uh, was heard. And uh, any further public comment was to have been uh, addressed in writing to the board within two weeks of that meeting and no further comment was received. Correct. Uh, Roy, what you should state is that the uh, public hearing was opened on the matter mm -hmm. as a public hearing, and that was continued until this meeting. So this is a continuation of the public hearing. So th that, this is a continuation of that public hearing, and in view of the fact that we have not had any other further comment, it's the board's intent to, to close the public hearing uh, regarding that That's application. Correct. That's correct. Does any of the board members want to make a comment? Yeah. So what you can do is you can have your discussion now as to what follows with this and at the mm -hmm. end of that then close the public hearing. Okay. So Kathy, have you had a chance to review the, the, the further information that the applicant made regarding our questions for them? Well, we received a submission today. So, oh, so no, not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking over it quickly. I noticed that there we, we had asked them for some input regarding the construction management, and I don't see really anything regarding that. Yeah, construction construction methodology. Construction methodology. Yeah, yeah. Was that something that? I'm sorry, I didn't get the comment. Okay. We would have was, responded. But. Okay. And the other issue that I know we had some great concern about was how to re reinforce the, the, the hole that's going to be dug in the basement for the sanit sanitation. And our feeling was that just the, the rings themselves may not be sufficient to prevent cave-in from the surrounding structures. Well, I did discuss that item at 
I'm Don Jewell, the architect. Um, I did discuss that item with our engineer, John Condon, and he actually concurred with the narrative that I gave you last month, which essentially describes doing a cutting ring where you use a three-foot section, you dig out the center of it and drop it down and put additional rings on top of it as being preferred to trying to drive piles, mm -hmm. which is the alternative to that. Mm -hmm. he, both he and I are concerned that driving piles that close to that masonry wall is going to break the wall. Um, I've had some bad experience recently in West Hampton Beach with exactly that, not for a septic system, but driving piles too close to a masonry wall, and we'd like to avoid that. I also conferred with the installation contractor, and he, he agreed this is the best way to put that in. I did give you a, a new sheet of drawings showing and describing the installation of both the typical grease trap and septic tanks, as well as the leaching pools, leaching pools being much deeper than the grease trap and septic tank. Those units should be of, of no problem because they're just barely below the adjacent footing. Well, that is that. Yeah, we received that today. I haven't had really a chance yeah. to take a look at it. I saw that you have an angle of repose that goes down to the bottom of the leaching pool, right. but it doesn't take any, uh, any consideration of going beyond that. Well, there's, there's no intent of digging that excavation. I just showed yeah, the line. Within, yeah. within that line. Yeah, I'd, I'd like the uh, this next uh, until we meet again on the work session an opportunity to review, the, review what he submitted because it is a new, a new plan he has. That, that, that was my work on Easter, so I'm sorry it came so late. <laughs> uh, the one thing that was in there that I, I liked right off the bat that I read was that you're going to have someone supervising the engineer yes. supervising the excavation. That actually was a right. condition of our Board of Review. Okay. So. So and we will have more comments for you at the next work session. Any other, other questions, comments? Warren? I know you had, did you want to put your points into the record regarding this application? I'm sorry. Regarding Elka, did you want to put your points regarding the parking and what Citarella? Is, what are we talking about? Citarella. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Oh, the com um, comments that I have to make on Citarella is uh, limited to uh, primarily the open meeting that took place, and uh, my impressions are that the principal problem, the ones that we hear about the most, uh, is the parking situation. Uh, I'm also on the impression, however, that your attorney, and this is cleared with the Department of Health. They have approved the plans, or they have almost approved them. I'm not quite sure what the status is. I know they went to the Board of Review to get an exception for separation of the pools, but I don't know if the plans have been resubmitted to the reviewer or approval. Have you gotten that the, approval? They have. The plans have have been passed. We're awaiting pollution control to let us go on the remediation. The remediation is supposed to be taking place on uh, Friday. So you have so a stamp approval from them? We do not. It, it, the, but I do have a letter back from uh, Wastewater saying that the plans are okay. And I can give you a copy of that letter. Yeah, I would appreciate that because there's also an indication that the excavation is going to be the 25 feet. Very poor. And one of the standards are that. I apologize. Uh, I, I, see what I can do about it. So right. I want a clarification on that. But I'll it, continue. You are correct. Talking. It cannot go deeper than 25 feet below grade. The health department has a, it approved doesn't. their plan. But the pool. Well, Andrioli. The leaching Andrioli pool does extend beyond. Used to be head of the health, if you know. No, the leaching pool is a 17 foot deep that? pool, three feet above groundwater. There's a and separate a approval. Look. Yeah. It looks like it goes. No, I'm aware of the 25 foot restriction, and it doesn't. As I say, give me a chance to review it. And okay. Talk about it. And if you have a copy of that approval, I'd appreciate it. I'll put that into the record. Thank you. Is he going to sit down? He can sit down if he wants to. I don't have any real questions for him. It's just that I thought that uh, 
the problem with this particular application is that the parking situation belongs to the Board of Trustees and not to the Planning Board. Uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, it seems to me that the Planning Board should do that and is concerned with the other uh, companies that are using parking lot number five, which is a public parking lot. And everybody knows the stationery store and Parmigiani and the bake shop and the Chinese garden and sip and soda and the laundry are all using uh, that public pop pop lot. Uh, in addition to some school teachers, but that's being uh, taken care of. So, uh, uh, as long uh, as the Board of Trustees is the agency that, that determines how the lot is being used, the lot currently has a two-hour parking limit, but the businesses that I just mentioned, other than for uh, sit-down, eat ones, are businesses in which you drop in, you do your business, and in a matter of minutes, you want to get out. Uh, it seems to me uh, that it's going to be pretty crowded. If you go up to Citarella, which has a private parking lot in Bridgehampton, uh, they have some 85, uh, roughly, spots in a private parking lot, which, when I was there on an afternoon, was f relatively 90% full. Uh, the public parking lot, which has now lost 23 parking spots because of the change in uh, the uh, uh, so the walkways for the school, has got about 45, and there uh, is an issue, which I think is the only real issue. Uh, I see in our minutes uh, that we're talking about the shopping carts. And the shopping carts, there's 75 shopping carts in use in uh, Bridgehampton. Uh, it takes a space of approximately 30 feet long and four feet wide to store those shopping carts. But of course, if the shopping carts never leave the premises because you're making an arrangement to uh, restrict them to use within the property, uh, then it doesn't seem to me that your shopping carts are that big a problem. Citarella has its own truck parked in the back. I don't know about any delivery trucks, but there is about enough room back there to park one 45 or 50 foot box. Uh, <laughs> they, can, they can figure out how many trucks they're gonna need in the absence of the normal food delivery 60-footers uh, that uh, go into a 70-footers in a space like that. So uh, we're in the village needs people that want to develop the property, needs a food store. The existence of this mini mall has always been a joke has uh, had dog food stores in it, and it's, it's been unsuccessful in every way. It's, and it's been empty with one or two or three empty stores ever since I can recall, and uh, this would be quite a substantial change. Uh, I don't know what you're gonna do. As a landlord and the owner, uh, with, the, with the parking and how to control it. Uh, it's not our business. Uh, I uh, would wish you uh, the best of luck. And incidentally, in Bridgehampton, they have 16 employees who are gonna be there from uh, early in the morning to late in the afternoon. I don't know where they're gonna park. Uh, it's. Uh, it's something you're going to have to deal with. Good luck. I'm glad to see something happening that's positive 
in that particular uh, area uh, of, uh, of the village. Just a quick comment. That's about all I can say. I don't see how we can turn it down. I do see how there are some, I'm amazed at the amount of details in the plans that Mr. That we, that we have brought up that need attention uh, and which I'm sure you're going to take care of. We'll do our best. But no more speeches. You. The shopping carts Thanks. are being maintained inside the building, not on the premises, but inside the building. We've got cart strips and it's, it's shown on the plans that you have. So at least that won't be a problem. Pat, Pam, do you have anything further to add? Yeah. So can I have a motion, motion to close the public hearing and adjourn the matter for all purposes? I'll second that. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 What are we doing? Closing, closing the public meeting. Closing. Yeah. Now, is this, I thought we had a public meeting. We did. It's over. It's closed. Yeah. Closed last time. Closed now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So the next item on our agenda for today is, um, I don't see Mr. Bennett, OIA Associates. Bennett and Reed by Kimberly Judd. I'm, I, I'm of counsel for John and I know he's on vacation. He actually asked me to come here on the ELCA, but I don't know if he was aware that he uh, was also on the agenda, so he's definitely not coming tonight. At the request of the applicant, shall we adjourn that I to the next meeting? I would appreciate that. I would appreciate that. Thank you very much. I have a motion to adjourn the OIA Associates at the request of the applicant to the next meeting. I'll make the motion. Second. Can we second that? Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We have bod adjourned for all purposes to the next meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I thought I saw that we had a request from the uh, Pelosi Auto and Roller yeah, to Gil Martin to adjourn that. To adjourn. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, the only thing that concerns me was there was no explanation right. for that. Um, but given the circumstances, the board is not, it's not unreasonable to grant the adjournment. Motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. A second. Uh, no, the, you're, you're, at making a motion to approve the, but you're making a motion to approve the request of the applicant to adjourn it for one meeting. Okay, I'll make that motion. That's it, that's it. Mm -hmm. Second. Somebody second that? Pam? Pam. Sure. I'll All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourning Pelosi for yes. a year? Did he say? Did no, you no, say? No, no, no. No, no, okay, I'm sorry. I just didn't like more. <laughs> here. <laughs> Well, we decided the work session Victoria Khan was sort of done, no? She has to no, Kathy was going to look up yeah, about the driveway. For the okay, great. Good evening. Aiden Brownlee of AEC Engineering representing the applicant. Okay. Um, so uh, I know that you're well aware, but in February we were given uh, a variance for the shed as installed in its current location. So. Um, just here to address any final concerns. About the driveway, I thought. Well, our, our concern is that when the site plan was originally submitted, there was an area that was, that was indi it indicated on-site parking. And wherever we can have on-street parking spaces mm -hmm. for a building, we certainly want to see that happen. Uh, but that area is really not a good configuration the way that you would have to enter the site and and um, you know pull in there and be able to get a couple okay. parking spaces it really isn't conducive to providing parking on the site um, so the I talked to John Foster about this and mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like we're, we keep beating this down but we, we keep coming to the same place that we it doesn't seem like you could accommodate parking spaces on there, but at the same time, you should be providing parking spaces. So I think that what, from my perspective, I would just be concerned about the future 
that mm -hmm. if this was to come in for any kind of a reconfiguration, you know, starting from scratch, that right now the village grandfathers you for if you don't have any parking spaces, then you only have to build the parking spaces for the additions, for instance. Mm -hmm. So I would want to make sure that we at least provide some kind of methodology to track that this has, say, six spaces, because like, you know, I scaled it off and I said you could probably fit six spaces if you smushed it in. And so if we were to move forward, not actually provide parking spaces, but just for the record, say that if anything were to happen in the future, that you would provide at least six spaces plus additional spaces for an addition. And that would provide that kind of protection um, for, for the village. Mm -hmm. I guess I, I, I understand the concerns there, but uh, two things. Um, the parking that is available at the edge of the asphalt, at the edge of the public parking lot, would essentially be eliminated by parking on the property and providing maneuverability to get off the property. Um, secondly, the, the gravel parking area was actually labeled by the surveyor, not by us. Mm -hmm. It was never our intention to provide on-site parking. Um, but this, you so know, I don't know if we, you know, I, I asked to have record searches from previous, any kind of previous approvals, that there was a parking, you know, there was parking provided here in the past. That was on, okay. you know, that was on the plan, so, and I, I, th and I think this is a reasonable way of dealing with it. Yeah, sure, and, and I, yeah, I don't, I don't argue you know, with the, the that's, points made. That's if the planning board agrees with me, um, but this, this allows you to continue using it the way you are, have the, you know, the space for the garbage truck to come in and, mm -hmm. and um, empty the dumpster and not have to provide you know, actual spaces. Uh, and you know, just knowing that that's not a really good situation up there. So, and to provide a coating and to provide an inlet so you can have one or two spaces is a lot. So, um, it's kind of wasteful. So, mm -hmm. Unless you were going to do a whole redesign of the site, it doesn't really make sense. So it's just a protection for the future. Okay. So I don't know how that can be worked out, though, from a, you know, a a condition, a covenant, we need a covenant. And so forth. Can I ask, is there a, a, a written easement that this property has to use that property to the north in um, terms of the chain of not that I'm aware record of, title? You know, as, as owner? I, I'd like to see, make that an official request to see title search. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, I really don't recall, so I can't. I right. can't. Could you get it? Could you get the board? I give you. I give you a copy of the title report. Please. Um, that's no problem. Yeah. Um, but the way the space is is configured, I mean, you have to to access it. You're going through that the big parking lot, yeah, yeah. which is almost always empty anyway. I understand. So, that. and there's a an elevation change that you might have mentioned too between the that the north asphalt. big the big asphalt and then our um, uh, and our parking area. So. I mean, I, we park there. Uh, I we understand. actually I'm park just I'm just wondering about the legality of, of No, I'm saying we access. park on our own parking. Yes. On our own but you uh, have to use this other parcel to get to it. Yes. Because yes. the property is precluded from the street from accessing exactly. its own rear yard. Exactly. Right. The so. same way as when you get into the building, uh, Southampton Inn's uh, parking lot with the building department is you have to access that too. So uh, you can also go through. You go, yes, there's an access yeah, that everybody that. uses back and forth. Right. So. It may be something similar. I have well, no idea. Uh, I'll have to find out. Yeah, yeah, please. And I'll, give you, the, I'll give you a copy of the title report that I have. Please. Yeah. But, uh, the faster you could get that to me, the more it would help the time I've got, and we could be processing your own application. Mm -hmm. But I think as far as if this is acceptable, what Kathy is suggesting that we will need a covenant filed with I the just county didn't clerk. I actually understand what Kathy was saying. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, clear as part of this is, is um, knowing that right now the village is, is considering a change in the zoning that would allow an expansion of, of some of the buildings oh. in the village business district. Right. And if you're grandfathered and you don't have any parking spaces, then that might actually allow for an increased, you know, more square footage without providing additional parking spaces. Right. So, Whereas I think that you know you should be able to provide at least the parking spaces that should have been 
I thought the expansion plans for the village, as I understood them from the public hearings, was the intent was to try and do it in the big public parking lots, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. to keep it off of the, the site, so that um, and the village was looking at different. It, issues no, it is. To it that. is. But th there is a there is if there is going to be an expansion of an existing building, you should be able to provide for the parking spaces that you either have plus the addition. There still are requirements for the parking. They'll be right. relaxed. There's a, it's a 60% of the okay. required spaces. Uh -huh. So there would be a relaxation there. And I'm not even sure that you could provide that. So, uh -huh. uh, but, you know, but I wouldn't need anything easy. special. If, if, if in the remote possibility that we ever wanted to expand that building, you'd still have to expand it in conformance with whatever the code is at the time. So there right. would be nothing unique to that, to this building versus any other building. So I wouldn't need anything specific to this building, right? I'd have to, I'd have to build to code. You'd have to provide, well, you'd have to provide at least the parking spaces that you're providing now. Whatever the code is at the time. Yeah. The code will continue to change and evolve. So 50 years from now, if the building gets expanded, whatever the code is then is going to be what we'd have to no, build No, no, right? I mean, but no. there is that grandfathering that you have to, that, right now, that, I understand we're yeah, grandfathered okay. because we yeah. didn't change anything. Right. This no, but it, yeah, but in the future, it. they they. I mean, I don't see them changing that that provision in the code that you would. I'm not smart enough to know what they'll do with it. Yeah, well, I don't. You never know what they're going to do know. in the future. Right. <laughs> right. That's what I'm but, saying. I didn't understand. That's yeah. why I wasn't following what you were saying. Do you understand now? Or no. okay. <laughs> I know today we're grandfathered, and if we build an addition, we have to build the code, whatever the parking requirements mm -hmm. will be at the. Oh no, 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 no! If no. you were to, if you were to, um, if you were to expand now, you'd have to. You would be grandfathered for the you parking spaces that, that you have. Uh -huh. If you, it, there are there are buildings in the village that have no parking spaces at all, right. and and or maybe they have one parking space, and if they were to expand, they would. Only be able, only have to provide the spaces for the addition. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what you're saying. Okay, yeah. got it. So and so we have to provide if we expand, we have to provide additional spaces for the addition. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Okay. And so we'd have it. to have some kind of now I assumption. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> took you. I'm sorry. <laughs> took me a while. Not you. It took me no, a while. I don't know if I explained it so well. So. <laughs> I'm not sure if I understand. Right. <laughs> I think what we're trying to say is that this property may have, at the current time, a certain number of spaces required. I mean, so, there aren't any, it right? It's 22 mm -hmm. according to code now, and it, you know, it never would provide. There's Correct. not. A, but there's, there's some amount. The there's some amount now that is the sort of the grandfather number, whatever that is, and we want to make sure that number remains constant and doesn't go to zero as a right. result of right. what. It doesn't of, provide an advantage over. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So in other words, you, I'm sorry. Aiden. Aiden. Aiden said that, that that spot is not even parking. But I think we're contending that it, it, was. it was you need to have parking at the present time according to the, what your grandfathered requirements are. And you are can't just any? let that go to zero. Am I, am I saying the right it's thing? It's kind of a no man's land as far as, you know, it's not, and it, there aren't any striped spaces, and that's not unusual right. in the village. Right. There's an area of maybe um, 1,800 it, square feet. It was striped at one time. Oh, it was. Well, I was trying to go back and look at aerials from like there was comp It was a concrete <laughs> base back there at one time. Yeah, there was. There was. Um, but but do they? They don't have to. As it stands right now, they don't have to provide parking because they're grandfathered into. Like Cinderella's, is that correct? I mean, that is a ch that's a choice. I mean, the the way that it is now is very uncomfortable to park there because of the way the parking lot for the uh, movie theater is mm -hmm. there's there's no it's there's a little bit of a separation. You said that there's actually a little bit of a bump just there. Just a little bit of a bump. I don't know how many inches it is. Well, that was put to uh, go for I'd the say there's a good foot fall right. off from that. So well. did something for drainage. drainage. Yeah. But so in order to create a, a well-designed parking lot, you'd want to create a curb line and create an entrance where so the cars could go in and out of mm -hmm. there and not get blocked in. But if you did that, there really isn't any room to maneuver in there. Yeah. So there really isn't any 
great answer from a design perspective for parking. So it's in a way better to leave it the way it is, use it for turning around, have a couple cars be able to you know pull in there, but I mean, you park back there. I've never seen anybody park in there. We park there. You, uh, I've never I, seen. I, I, yeah. I park there. You park on the gravel park. Yeah. yeah. There was a gym <laughs> in there, and <laughs> people park. park. Just, I've never seen anybody park there, and yeah. it, it's like it people park where that curb line is behind. That's off the site. They used to be on both sides. Yeah, they used to park side. almost up to the right building. To the building. When yeah. when the there was a gym there, I, I used to go there all the time, and they parked right, practically, right there. You know, right to when you went down into the cement. Yeah. So there's but plenty I mean, to do it right, though. Would oh no, I'm not saying it's right, this, and I I wouldn't advocate that. That's all I'm saying. So it's just. Um, I think Mr. Lemansky is. So right. what are we requesting the applicant to do? Cinderella parking. <laughs> Kathy, I'm wondering oh, if this, the is, this is Mr. Hammer. But oh, Mr. Hammer, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. I'm wondering if the issue is is not moot. If yeah. there's no easement to use that movie theater parking lot, then this is a moot issue because that building extends from one side yard to the other, does it not? But there must have that they, been... They never did have any parking back there right. once the, the building was built. No, there was, because when Mercedes... No, but was it required? Was it no, no, it's not whether it required, whether it was accessible. How to access it without going through a private parking lot. Yeah. yeah. But people parked, but it was just all yeah, over the place. Yeah, they parked, and they still do, shelter. but the point is, if there's no legal easement to use that movie theater parking lot, that mm -hmm. could be shut off tomorrow. That's true. The movie theater could put a fence across there oh, tomorrow, yeah. and oh, that, that ends the parking yeah, period. So yeah. once that building was built, that may have precluded any kind of le legal parking there whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I so know. the title report uh, may or may not Hill show Street. it. We yeah. may have to do a single and separate search, but I think the board, at least in terms of coming to a decision, needs to know this information. Mm -hmm. no, that's a, I think that's a fair okay. point. Which is a report? So, at the request of the applicant, we will, the board will adjourn the, the matter until the next hearing. Okay. I'll make, I'll, you want me to make the motion? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll accept the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So we just need to get that. Okay. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Which brings us to the application of the Southampton Hospital. Good evening. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Wayne Bruin, O'Shea Marcinsigan Bruin here with Vinnie Gordiello from the Rainer Group. Um, if you recall, we had a work session, I think it was back in December. December. Um, we told you the hospital's latest endeavor to um, basically relocate its operating room, which would call for a small bump out on the northerly side of the building in an area which is mostly landscape but also some paving and parking. Um, we did submit a formal site plan for you um, and we're presently in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals because in our review of all the surveys we found that uh, the lot coverage um, already exceeds the maximum lot coverage in, in the MD zone and thus by adding the uh, small addition we would increase that degree of nonconformity as well as the generator enclosures enclosures would be considered building area that also counts towards lot coverage so we're presently in front of the zoning board of appeals and we have a site plan in front of you because a good portion of the redesign of the parking is within your purview the zoning board, uh, through their consultants, Nelson, Pope, and Voorhees, provided us with a memo last Thursday evening um, that it raised a question under SEEKER, the State Environmental Quality Review Act. And, and the question, um, because of the historic district being um, partially on properties across the street, it bumps this up from an unlisted action to a type one action. So they, I don't know if they've formally made a request I don't know if the ZBA or anybody. Today. Today. Um, 
but basically, they're required under Seeker, based on guidance from Nelson Pope and Voorhees, um, to coordinate with other agencies, particularly the planning board, as to whether or not you want to be lead agency. And if you did, you need to communicate that back to them. And also, uh, then you would be obliged in making a Seeker determination before the zoning board could act. Then the zoning board would act, and then we'd be back here with your final site plan review before we can go get a building permit. Um, in the memo, and I have one copy here, um, there was a couple questions raised and um, some blanks that we had in our original environmental assessment form, such as the depth to bedrock, um, and a couple other points. Uh, we have a revised environmental assessment form that the Rainer Group has prepared. Um, we can provide that um, to Nelson Pope and Voorhees, as well as the board tonight. We are looking um, to see if you could help us out in the review, and it comes <laughs> in this fashion. One is, as the zoning board can't act without you determining lead agency status, as well as a, a negative declaration, which I believe when you look at this, you would agree that um, it will not have a significant adverse impact on the environment. In fact, is a, a very much uh, needed public improvement. The second point, though, is given the timing of your meetings, even your next meeting would be well beyond the next zoning board meeting. So first request would be is if the board felt comfortable um, issuing a negative declaration tonight, <laughs> um, which I think would be very helpful, but I don't know if your consultant uh, feels comfortable doing that. But if not, the other alternative, um, and I asked the zoning board this, um, is that you could decline lead agency status, and in which case then the zoning board would be obligated to proceed. And when I question them, they would do it if you did, did decline, but they're also willing to let you assume lead agency status. The point I make is either way, we're, we're just looking towards a timing question. And either way, the same consultants are reviewing the environmental assessment form and providing the same advice, um, whether it's Kathy or Chick, either one or both of them are providing the same advice to both the zoning board and the planning board. So I think from a timing standpoint, I, I think it might be a little stretch for me to ask <laughs> you to do a negative declaration tonight, unless Kathy goes, yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> however, I think the, procedurally it might be better to uh, decline lead agency status and let the zoning board handle that at their next meeting, um, which would be, I believe, April 20, uh, it's before your next work session, actually. It's the Thursday before your next work session. Um, but w what we'd like to do tonight, though, is go through the site plan so that you're at least comfortable and maybe you can provide any advice and um, to uh, both our consultants as well as the zoning board in, in making that decision. So I don't know if your council has any suggestions or anyone, but we can present the plans so you understand them and maybe also uh, some of the issues that were raised by Chick Voorhees um, so that Kathy can understand where, where we address those questions. One of the things um, we did do originally, just for concept purposes, and you'll see your site plan is a little different. This is the existing hospital property, um, six plus acres, the buildings, existing buildings in blue. The proposed addition is this gray area here to the north in this sort of court area. Um, and we propose two generator enclosures to basically replace the existing generators that are in the basement area here. And they were to be located in this uh, lawn area adjacent to this parking, which is across the street from the sewage treatment plant for the hospital. Since that time, though, um, a number of logistics have been reviewed. And if you look at the site plan, you'll even notice that the hospital has decided to relocate them in this area, which is, if you look closely, this is the underground fuel tank that presently fuels the diesel for the existing generators. 
So that, that was one of the logistics. But what it does physically is this was a little higher area than the parking, if you know that, open area exposed, even though there's hedges and we have office and our sewage treatment across the street. It actually lowers them and puts it down behind these other structures and enclosures. But even with that, if you look at the, 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 the enclosures themselves, and one of the issues that's being raised is the noise attenuation. Basically, they're enclosures that are um, complete. There's actually a tank, fuel tank, that these are fueled off of underneath. And, and the noise attenuation, based on the um, engineering, is, what is it, 70 decibels at 5 feet. Beyond the enclosure. Beyond the 5 feet from the enclosure, um, which um, I think your code is 65 decibels at the property line. So even with that, I think the engineer can uh, attest to the fact that with, with this relocation and, and so on, the, the next, instead of 70 feet from the street, the clo nearest uh, enclosure will be about 95 feet from the street, lower level in that area that's sort of in, in, enclosed. Um, but I think, um, Vinny, you can attest to the... Yeah, we we the estimate with both could generate... Could you go a little further up? So I can Based on Kessel calculations, we would estimate that with both generators running simultaneously, that one could estimate the dBs to be close to 40 decibels at the property line. And that would be both of them running at the same time. Now, of course, these are emergency generators. They're there when the power is off and when everybody else is here during the hurricane, we want the hospital running um, and they're going to be on at that, that time. Um, Certainly, I think at a time it's not an ongoing event that they're going to be on all the time. It's an emergency, and I think that in even some cases, I'm not going to say this particular neighborhood, um, there'll probably be more noise from everybody else's generators than, <laughs> than these generators. But nonetheless, um, that is there. They are replacing the existing generators that are diesel run now that are in the basement and outdated. Um, these would create uh, greater capacity for more of the building to be served in the, in the event of an emergency. So I think Mr. Gordiello has some documents to submit, but I don't, um, did you want to go through, Vinny, the, the site plan with the parking rearrangement? Basically what we've done, been able to do, um, if you're familiar with that area where the uh, addition is, is redesign that in a way such as we don't lose any parking on the property. Parking is a premium. We don't want to lose, but we were able to redesign it so that n none of the parking is being reduced. Even with the relocation, we are able to relocate spaces uh, on the site so that there is no loss. Um, and you're very familiar with the fact uh, that we did add parking um, and 17 plus handicapped spaces on the south side of the building. And there was, um, the village was very helpful in redesigning the on-street parking on Herrick Road and Old Town Road so that there's even, you know, in a diagonal fashion, which has um, helped tremendously as well. And uh, the hospital is moving on the paving contracts over at the annex to provide more parking as well. As Mr. Bruin alluded, um, well, I'll first start. My name is Vincent Cordiello. I'm with the Brainerd Group, and I was the civil engineer and the land surveyor on the project. Um, my office is in Watermill. Uh, based on the comments that we had gotten uh, from the village's planning consultant with respect to the EAF that was presented to the zoning board, um, I basically uh, addressed those comments or, or prepared an amended EAF that's intended to address the comments that are there. So I'm submitting 10 copies of that to the board today. Um, Kathy, I'm also going to give you a copy. Uh, this is Chick's copy that I, I referenced. Sure. Yeah. Is, is that based on Nelson Pope's? Yes. Input? They they had asked, as as Wayne indicated, there was no depth to bedrock indicated. We had put that in there. Uh, there were some comments made about the generator. We felt that we would put the specifications right in the EAF as well. There were some dimensions missing with respect to the height of the building. We added stuff like that. So we basically followed the bullets, comments that uh, the planning consultant had identified. Uh, 
um, is it, have you determined whether the generators will be uh, gas, natural gas, or oil? Yeah, they will be diesel. They'll be, the, 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 the generators themselves right now are spec that as being Caterpillar. Um, however, due to the nature of uh, the, the letting, you know, we may get a cola generator. The specifications of the generator are a 600 kilowatt generator. Mm -hmm. Both these, both may it be a cola or a caterpillar, comes with what is called a belly tank. Um, they have uh, a diesel fuel tank built right underneath the, the uh, enclosure. The generator and the tank goes into the actual enclosure and the, intent, the primary source of fuel for these generators will be diesel. The existing 6,000 gallon diesel <coughs> fuel tank that we have buried on the property, which is basically right underneath this concrete slab, will remain and be a supplemental source for fuel. It's per currently permitted by the health department. It currently serves our existing generators. So the intent would be to leave that. And, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, there's been a bunch of reasons why we've moved the generator to these locations, height, exposure, um, and even just from wiring, it seems that the logistics of it, it makes more sense to, 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 to locate them here. We would reduce the construction costs. How about, how about elevations with regard to flooding? Well, this, this is a higher elevation up over here. Everything slopes down. This elevation relative to the height of the street is, I'm, I'm guessing, somewhere about 10 feet higher. So they're in a better position than the ones you yeah, had in the basement, presumably. Oh, I, you know, I... I, I think so. <laughs> I think there's, a, there's a, every step you take with this, with this site, I think you're, you're bettering uh, what you're uh, getting. Uh, with respect to the site plan, uh, this is an issue came up with the planning board, I mean with the zoning board, excuse me, which is something that we're going to need to address in revising our site plan drawings, is that there was parking here with respect to security spots and uh, maintenance spots. Uh, so as far as the loss of, I count, two spots, we're going to need to make those up in the area over here. So I intend to come forward with a revised parking layout that would show that. Um, the, the, the basis of providing the two additional stalls would be to eliminate uh, the four handicapped spots that are here. Um, you're going to maintain the handicapped parking stalls here as well as here. On the south side of the hospital, we just finished a, a parking lot there that, propo that provided 17 additional handicapped spaces. So it, it, in looking at the percentage of the overall parking that's provided, um, I believe that we fall well beyond that ADA um, percentage of handicapped parking stalls relative to the total number of spots that we provide. And if, and if need be, we'll, we will provide that calculation, that percentage on the site plan. site plan submission that was made uh, consisted of five drawings. The first drawing is uh, zoning notes, existing conditions map, um, some radius maps that's required. The second sheet uh, is the removal sheet, and, and this is the reason I bring this out, is to just kind of give the board an idea of what's going on with the property, what's coming out. Um, in a nutshell, what you see hashed out is basically what is it being removed. We have some sanitary structures, uh, a sewage portion of the sewer collection system that's going to need to be relocated. We have some drywalls that are going to need to be relocated. This is the footprint of the new building. The entranceway right now to the, to the hospital is in here. We're going to break the sidewalk and curb. All this comes out. All this pavement, this bit portion of the building comes out all this sidewalk comes out to accommodate for the new building. How disruptive do you think that will be to 
parking and operations while it's ongoing? To well, I, from, a, from a staging standpoint, uh, we would envision um, probably cutting off this, this portion of the property right here. Um, presently, right now, um, the hospital provides for valet parking. I think pro it's likely they would need to expand those services. Um, but, you know, that is a, you know, that's one of the reasons why, even as far as the extent of this parking lot, um, we would envision, you know, this being used for some staging, and that's really why we're going to need to reconstruct it and when we're said and done, repave that, the whole entranceway right through this whole portion of the property. And how long would that take, do you think? We have an estimated uh, construction period of 12 months. Um, initially in the EAF, that was initially submitted to the zoning board, it said six months. That's incorrect. We're, we're shooting for a year to build this thing. The parking lot that is immediately to the east uh, is, is the curb line is, is going to be realigned because as of right now, uh, the size of the stalls along with the parking width fails to meet the current design standards of the village code. The aisle width varied somewhere in from 20 to 22, we're providing 24, uh, and every parking stall that would be proposed would be nine by uh, 19 in accordance with the standards of the village code. Um, we have a couple concrete walkways here that uh, don't meet ADA standards with respect to slope. They're being reconstructed uh, to, to meet that maximum pitch of one on 12. Um, we're putting new sidewalk along the whole front here that ties into the doctor's parking lot. The area to the east of the addition, which right now is all a uh, hard surface, either a slab or a building, is to come out, and that area will be vegetated with lawn. We have a few street trees that were previously in this area, the, the hospital, that are being removed, and we're going to transfer them over to here. We're showing one tr new tree right there. Um, it's likely that we're probably going to need to change the landscape plan and add one or two more. I guess people's names are on those trees, and <laughs> we need to move those trees accordingly. Um, we went into, you know, as far as uh, grading and drainage and uh, stuff along those lines, we're providing stormwater containment for the building addition, um, the, the proposed roof area, um, and basically relocating the existing drainage that currently serves the existing roof area. There is a net reduction uh, in overall impervious area, taking into account what's the existing impervious is based on the proposed excluding the building addition. And what I mean by that is, is that if we are taking care of this with respect to drainage at a two inch storm event, we're relying on the existing drainage to handle the new imp improvements in that that area ultimately is less now than what would be proposed. Uh, and, the, and the basis really being is that this whole area is, is coming out of the mix. Um, you know, other than that, I, if the board has any questions, your consultants have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. So there's a new stormwater drainage area proposed. For yes, them. it's it's and that's going to be located in the parking area behind it. It's going to be located right within the driveway area. We have a test hole that was taken right in here. Mm -hmm. we, uh, I think we estimated groundwater to be at elevation five. Uh, we're five or six feet above that, with respect to the uh, the bottom of our proposed leaching structures. Sorry, we yes, 26 feet uh, down is what we measured groundwater to be on March 21st, which is elevation 5.5. .5.
and the bottom of our, our drainage structures are somewhere around 12. I don't know if you got a chance to see these. I don't know if they were made a part of the record. This is just a, a rendering. Um, you can see the addition basically looks like the rest of the building. We'll submit that. It's not in the file. We'll submit that. I know they, I'm trying to keep track of which boards we submitted things, but just to keep everybody in the same loop. And this is a set of floor plans that show the existing operation, how the existing operating room, the space that's being used, and once the new operating room is constructed, the old operating room will de be decommissioned and changed into storage areas, um, which is required by the State Health Department. Um, so this will give you a, somewhat of a roadmap as to what that, how that area and space, and then it's just a little larger. Diagrams. That information was submitted as part of our initial submission in November. Okay. Right. So if there are copies of that that needs to go that the village would like, we can provide them again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Four thousand square feet. Um, we are submitting six plans to the Mr. health Paulson department. Put six million dollars into the emergency room. I have, we have end. met with the health department already uh, on a preliminary basis. Um, the plan is rated for about a hundred and four thousand gallons per day. Beautiful. Based on our flow records, we're somewhere in the mid forties. Trying to find the front uh, door. speaking though with the health department. Uh, you know, we, right now uh, we have 125 beds, uh, and their comments pr primarily were that, in addition to that bed count, that uh, any outpatient services could be broken out separately with respect to flow. The short answer is, is that you know I'm of the opinion that we have plenty of capacity in the plant for it. Um, and the rerouting of the sewer collection system, which is shown on the drawings. I believe is proposed in a manner that would meet their standards. No, no, the new operating, it's not adding capacity, it's same space. Yeah, I, I, you know, with respect to the application being made, um, technically per their flow, you're not, uh, you're not increasing your, the number of beds in the hospital. So even with the emergency room, addition of the footprint, that's not going to go up. However, uh, I think the health department, and again, I'm just speaking based upon my conversation with them, is that they recognize that hospitals these, day, these days have outpatient services. So years ago, they used to say, all right, well, you got a bed, it's X amount of gallons per day. Well, they realize that people that are coming here are not solely just staying overnight, that there are you know, maybe they come for therapy, maybe there's other nutritional things that they're seeing. They want that square foot area accounted for in your flow counts, and that's something that they're going to require we do. But as far as uh, relocating, you said there was a pipe that was being moved. That's uh, not something that needs to be reviewed by the health department or the DECs. I thought you said that you were moving one of the pipes. For the yeah, we are. It's shown on drawing C3. Yeah. Yeah, is, it, is that something that the DEC would review or the health department? Yeah, the health department. They are reviewing. Okay. okay. I just had a, if you could send me um, the calculation that you did for the noise attenuation. Okay. You could send that separately and just let me know okay. what your assumptions were. I personally were. Um, um, did not do the calculation. Yeah. We have Lazaros Engineering, okay. who are the mechanical and electric, you know, mechanical yeah. engineers on the project. Yeah. Um, they, that information that was provided in the EAF was based on information they provided to me, okay. which I have utmost confidence with their calculations, but I will definitely get you there long hand. Okay, thank you. Um, there was just one other thing that, um, and speaking with John Foster, he had expressed concern about some open COs. So I, that's um, something that the planning board in the past has tried to um, 
fix any problems that are there before approving another site plan. And um, so I don't know how, what the status is, but um, it was something that John Foster mentioned, so. You want me to react to that? I, I, I think basically um, <laughs> your council will advise the planning board, but I don't know if that's the basis for whether you can review, um, deny, or withhold mm -hmm. a, an approval. Certainly Mr. Foster can so. deal with whether or not a permit is issued. That is his issue. Um, we have been reviewing with his department as to what permits were issued for the hospital, and he gave us a property record card recently, which goes all the way back to the 50s. Um, we've asked him to pull files because we're not sure what COs have been issued f for all these permits, mm -hmm. including some of the most recent ones. Uh, certainly we are aware of some of the issues related to the most recent ones, but we're working all the way back, uh, given, us, given us an opportunity to make sure all the permits are dealt with, not just the last two, um, so to speak. Um, so far we haven't been able to review all the files. Um, some of them uh, are a little harder to find than others, <laughs> particularly as you go back. Um, but one of the issues that relate to the most recent ones has to do with um, some discussions with the fire marshal, not the building department, per se, but the fire marshal with respect to uh, the existing um, standpipe system on the premises. And the, the hospital um, just recently did hire a, a renowned expert in fire life safety issues to guide us in that regard because undoubtedly um, the issue, um, which is not clear with the fire marshal, needs to be clarified and it may result in an application being made to the state um, appeals board with respect to whatever solution is uh, acceptable. So um, they have hired that. We expect a report in the next month or so in that regard. So we are addressing that issue as far as COs. What is this building that's going to be removed? It's interesting. I, I think that was an extension which I could not find any permits for yet. Um, and that was to give access um, related to the county clinic. And it may be it where they like had the, the MRI imaging and everything else when they bring uh -huh. in the trailers and things like that was a means of getting access to that. So that, that whole portion of that wing, that, that's all being removed. Well, right so the, the clinic is being removed? No, no. the no. clinic is staying there, although the county has expressed interest right. in mo relocating perhaps to the annex okay. or other places, as well as the hospital, as you know, is discussing relocating entirely, too. I just wanted to just a couple more comments, if you, if you don't mind. We, we have provided a landscaping plan. We have provided a lighting plan. The proposed lighting is bollard lighting. Uh, we provided a cut sheet on that. Um, they are LEDs. I believe they're 18 watts. They're a, uh, with a color, correlated color of, uh, I believe it's 3,500 Kelvin, which is a very neutral color. It's not that bright light that uh, would the dark sky people don't like. Uh, but with respect to the requirements of what's on the drawing and stuff, I think we pretty much tried to be as complete as we possibly could. Do you, you want to say that you would have the revised plans that, that show the realignment of parking and so forth? I would think that we could kind of do that. Um, we would give that, well, two days. <laughs> <laughs> we could right, finish so it this I'm week. Sure be yeah. yeah. That's, that's not a problem. Pretty small stuff, 4,000 square feet. Uh, just from the seeker perspective, I, I don't see, we were going back and forth on this in the office today because typically what happens when you Six do a, a type one action and you do a coordinated review, you have to do a letter to the other involved agencies and then wait for a response. And in this case, the zoning board has asked the planning board to take on the lead agency status. I could see, you know, we would 
we have that letter from the zoning board. I don't see if there's any other involved agencies. I don't think Suffolk County Planning Commission is an involved agency. I don't think the, I, we were wondering if Suffolk County would be, if a natural gas generator was proposed. So I could see doing a, um, a coordinated review kind of as a matter of fact that we accept that the planning board accepts the lead agency status and you know does it all at once i don't see there being any it's just kind of silly to do a letter and then wait and all that so i mean we could do a letter to the zoning board if the planning board wants to take on lead agency saying that they accept that and then we would review the eaf do a part two and, and make a recommendation for a determination at the next meeting. I don't see why it would take any longer, unless there are things that come up that, you know. Well, the only reason I request it is your next meeting is after the next zoning board meeting, so essentially nothing will happen at the next zoning board meeting, and then they won't be able to react until, you know, the end of May, um, at least from a hearing standpoint, which mm -hmm. puts it off into June, possibly, with a decision. So, you know, we're sitting here when the application was submitted. We came to this board. In a work session last November. I don't think there's any surprises here. Um, and we're, you know, um, at a point where we've actually submitted a formal application, the zoning board. Uh, there hasn't been a member of the public or anybody else uh, that has a concern. It's a much needed community service. And um, I think that what we're, the hospital's looking for is a little consideration in that regard. Uh, the two suggestions I have, I have no objections to what you're suggesting, but it just puts it off for another two months at least before the zoning board can react to it. Uh, they did indicate at the meeting, and I specifically questioned them, I said, well, is it also possible that if the planning board can do this and expedite it somehow, uh, that would be great. However, if, this, if, if that's not possible, is there a way that would the zoning board undertake it to do seeker themselves and they indicated they would so there is that choice this is what i was saying is that if you decline lead agency status then the zoning board is required to undertake that themselves and in which case they can do by their next meeting assuming you know everything we've provided here is all updated and uh, otherwise um, which i think is fully in place so in that regard, the zoning board could act, and then we could be back here solely for the site plan issues at your next meeting. Mm -hmm. How does the zoning board get away from the coordinated review issue? Well, you, they did coordinate. You're here. You just said we haven't. Well, we did. The, the, basically, what we have, uh, there's a memo today to the planning board requesting that the planning board take on lead agency so in a, i mean that's not the formal coordination with the you know sending the eaf with the coordination letter but i mean i don't think they uh, don't think have all those details and yeah. i think they would rely on you to help them right. do that right. which i think i understood was going to happen mm -hmm. by today mm -hmm. so that this question could be asked then the question and then the recommendation that was that we that the planning board take on the the lead agency just because of the nature of the review that's your that recommendation yes that's your recommendation well and it makes sense and it was not even a timing thing it was just the nature of the planning board's review you know, the, the zoning board is doing a variance for you know for relief for coverage whereas the planning board is looking at a whole host of issues noise attenuation and and land use and all this stuff but, you know, land use compatibility obviously is not the hospitals there but access and so what's the answer to my question the answer is i believe they have coordinated kathy the zoning board has coordinated they they've coordinated requested whether or not the planning board wants to be lead agency that's their obligation right they have today by giving that that letter in and fact, it, yeah, and you have 30 days to respond. Yes. And if you do, fail to respond that. in 30 days, then they can assume lead agency status. So, I mean, there's those other options, too, and I don't <laughs> think we want to do that. I think essentially I want, you know, we certainly want the planning board's input, but I think procedurally 
we get to the same end because you, you and Chick are advising both boards. Mm -hmm. So the issues that you're raising all have been addressed in our mind, but certainly we can address any further questions whether it's in front of the zoning board or whether it's the planning board and we're not taking away any jurisdiction you're, you're certainly going to be here and reviewing the site plan but the question is is do we need an environmental impact statement to address the issues that are either inherent to the lot coverage question i don't believe so or even the redesign of the, the parking lots and i don't think so there either way and what is the uh what would be the problem in having the planning board write a letter to the board of appeals i mean are you you're, i think you're suggesting if i understand it correctly that the board of appeals will not you're not anticipating a decision at the april meeting are you from the zoning board yes no okay no no what i anticipate being able may to finish, do is may I finish, may I finish. So, okay. so what would be the problem in terms of trying to extend some consideration and expedition to this of the planning board writing a letter to the board of appeals saying the planning board intends to take lead agency status but recommending to the board of appeals that they go through with the the present that you're allowed to go through with the presentation at the may meeting in anticipation that the CEQA, uh procedure will catch up with both boards by the may meeting of the board of appeals when you might well anticipate a decision We've already had two meetings where we presented it, so there's not much else to present. But you said you're not anticipating a decision at the no, no. At the what, meeting. what what I would anticipate is is that they would be able to close their record, then putting it off the next well, month for a decision. Why can't the board, the planning board, suggest? Because your your decision on the seeker, they can't close the record until there's a negative declaration adopted either by this board or their own board. Okay, and the point is, is unless you do that tonight, you don't meet again until after the next zoning board right. meeting. So if you do, if you assume lead agency status and assume we're all in a position and we all agree that you do a negative declaration, you're not gonna do that until after the next zoning board of a meeting. So that means instead of the end of April, I get in the record a negative declaration, I get to close the hearing, hopefully, at the end of May, May. and then they make a decision in June. But what happens at wait, the end wait, of April, wait, like, wait, I have to go and wait, say... Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is it, if this has all been done, why would they have to wait a whole nother month to make a decision? Because I believe that's what they do with all, I mean, hopefully they could do a decision if they had it all in writing at the night they closed the record, but that's not always anticipated. Well, you're asking for some expedition, so why can't there be a little consideration on their part? I mean, it seems like all of this procedural accommodation is being put back to the planning board all I'm saying is let's the two boards work together uh, you wouldn't get a you wouldn't get a decision from the planning board probably until the June meeting anyway because the next meeting is going to be May well yeah but if we don't get a zoning board until June then then we're into July with the planning board not necessarily well, we've expedited decisions before here assuming we have it's a meeting a, you have a meeting <laughs> but anyway well, they held a meeting in uh, June. I'm just throwing out Stand. suggestions right. how I think it could be really expedited, given that we've had two full hearings at the zoning board. There really is, other than well, the I think question the, of I CO's, I think the higher which standard of, of review here is with the planning board. And so... Uh, the June meeting would be June 3rd. The planning board's June meeting would be June 3rd, which is four or five days after the May meeting of the Board of Appeals. It seems to me that if the Board of Appeals has heard all the testimony and the only thing they're waiting for is the secret issues, that, that with a request to them that they could have a decision ready. They could, but I don't presume that. Well, I'm not thinking that that presumption should be the determinant factor here about how this board is going to respond. No, I think the determinant factor is, is, is that whether it's this board or the zoning board, the, 
the environmental review is both, both boards are capable of doing it in this instance and two is that I understand there are, there are other there are other consultants are the same I understand you made your same point. advice is being made to both boards you you you've made your point I just think there are other issues involved here between the two boards so Kathy um, uh, how does how would the planning board not be in a position to think to render a decision by June third? Uh, May second is our next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, May sixth. May sixth. May sixth would be the next regular meeting. I mean, I don't see any problem with having a secret determination on May sixth. I, I, we couldn't do it tonight, no matter what. <laughs> Um, April 29th is the work session. So, just, you know, discussing it on April 29th and having April 29th, yeah? The work session. Work session, okay. Um, and then during a determination on May 6th, then the, the zoning board would have it, their May meeting, well in advance of their May meeting. And having a prayer meeting? <laughs> okay. I, I think a request is, and the, the planning board, I think, would support the suggestion that the planning board write a letter to the Board of Appeals and, and ask if, you know, they want to try and move this along to have a decision ready for that evening. And this, and this board on occasion has done a secret determination and an approval of the site, the site plan resolution on the same evening. So I understand that. I just know sometimes more complicated applications take more effort to put that together. Yeah. And I don't want to put anybody in a position that ordinarily go out of the way but right. any help would be appreciated so at the very least I would assume that what I'm hearing from council and is that there at least be uh, uh, some sort of resolution or letter that s indicates that you're accepting lead agency status and, and, yes. and, yeah. Yeah. or would it yeah. no, would but, want to accept that okay. Is it your position that there are no other involved agencies? Because we need to check into that. I mean, is, it, is that is the approval from the health department ministerial in nature? We believe it is because it's just relocating existing and pipes. Yeah, but and and the capacity issue seems to be it's just a matter yeah, of it, giving them. Said, and I think um, Aldo also mentioned is it's not a capacity right. question. It's it's more the. The, the function to make sure the pipes and the drainage and everything else is in, in a proper location, right. um, which we believe that is, but it's an existing pipe. The capacity is not changing. Although I know the health department, as Vinny in, has indicated, will try to take a bite of the apple, so to speak, as he indicated. Right now, their, their previous flow requirements are all based on number of beds. Mm -hmm. But the outpatient thing, they'll come back and try to document and say, well, this is what your flow is for future reference. And they're going to ask for a secret determination as well. Well, their as you know, the health department doesn't act right until the village or the right. town, which I think is not proper under secret, but nonetheless, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. they, they will not do anything until you adopt a secret determination. Okay. There are no county properties. That I did a quick look. I didn't see any county properties, waterways, anything that would involve the county planning commission. Okay, because that's the only that's the only hitch there as far as coordination goes that we would have to send it to them and officially ask for 30 days well, to get planning back. commission but is never same. never an involved never. agent they're, they don't that's have their their only true. advisory so they're never an involved agency that's true, but the health department could be an involved agency if they, they chose never to would be. take they would never take it on and, and, I should say not never. <laughs> yeah, next week say never. Case. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Elba? I don't know. Okay. Well, it sounds to me, if I can parse out the advice of our consultant and consul, that it's not going to be an EAF negative deck given this evening. Um, Got that we will <laughs> do our best to expedite this for you as much as possible. And I actually think I agree with uh, Mr. Robinson that I don't think it's going to happen any faster if we do it or if the, the uh, zoning board does it. 
so I think we will accept uh, the lead agency and we will write the letter that the council suggested to the uh, zoning board indicating that barring any unforeseen circumstances we would expect to, to to look favorably upon this as a negative declaration that would okay. be great <laughs> and ask them to have a decision ready for the their may meeting that's that's fine i just don't want it to necessarily be that we're directing how they to are to operate it's no direction just a request as Judge Magruder said, there's no harm in asking. I agree with you, Captain. So this would be adjourned at the request? Adjourned for all purposes. Applicants requesting adjournment? Correct. Oh, do you adopt the resolution accepting lead agency status? Or how do you do that? I don't think it's necessary, but at least you need to direct the, the letter to be sent to the zoning board. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so the motion was to adopt the lead agency status in this matter. Do I have a second for that? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And a motion then to adjourn the meeting at the request of the applicant for all purposes until the next regular meeting. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Those changes and get them resubmitted as quickly as possible. Thank you. Isn't that noise? Noise stuff. That's been an amazing thing. Working. The last item okay. on the agenda was Mr. When we had all the rest. It's Mr. Punnett's uh, application, which Mr. Kavanaugh indicated he would not be at this meeting. So I think we we decided to do it the work session. Just adjourned it. Punnett. Oh, um, this is one thing I just wanted to confirm with Bo. Uh, 220 Hampton Road. Yes. The one that has uh, the little residential property. Yes, and on the, to the south, right? Yeah. They they're now coming in for modified site plan mm -hmm. application to have the access from the residential street. Right. Do we have to do a public hearing? Um, don't it's know. Really, it's really in the same in the, going in the same direction. The neighbor sold them the property to allow the access. Um, so it's a modification. Well, what's the, the harm plan? in doing a public hearing? Just time. This has been two years, <laughs> so they can't they can't come in and say that you know there's a cri time crisis. <laughs> no, I was just. Uh... My thought would be to have the public hearing. That was okay. his request at the last meeting that we skipped the public. I can't remember where. No, I don't think was there, there wasn't any it presentation. Was a, it was a check if we needed to uh, do a public hearing for it because it is memorializing what had happened in the past with the lot line modification but now it's a modification to the site plan so mm -hmm. um so maybe it's been a long time as people need to be aware of it i think okay do you think it makes sense to schedule it then because then it would be on for the next the meeting. next meeting yeah. if they can make it sure yeah so that would be for my folks Resolution to schedule public hearing for the application of John R. Punnett at 220 Hampton Road. Schedule public hearing for May 6th. I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll talk to him. Okay. So that concludes the. Uh, applications we were going to talk about uh, the next work session would be normally on may 27th but since that is memorial day the question is uh, can we move it to tuesday may 28th which is fine with me mm -hmm. yes okay, okay with for me. everybody warned yeah. The oh, next meeting would not, not the next not the next not the next one the work session oh this the, work the work one session the one after this that will be Tuesday, May 28th, will be the work session instead of Monday, May 27th. We, is that a voting issue, Bo, or do we just decide to do that? Uh, resolution. Resolve to change the work session for the June meeting. May. May. For the no, May no, meeting. For the, no, for the oh. June public hearing from right. May 27th to May 28th. Have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Uh, then we have some minutes to approve. May, March 4th meeting and the March 27th meeting. I don't know if we have enough people here from the March 4th meeting because I wasn't here. Um, I'll, I'll pull it up right now. I don't. I was. So it would just be Pam and Pat. That's not it's, enough people. Steve. Mm -hmm. It's Steve who's here. Steve wasn't here. But he's, he's not he's here. He's not here now, but he was here then. Well, so we can't so approve that. No. Wait till okay. Steve comes back. Okay. <laughs> But on the uh, March 27th, then, did you want to? March 27th. March 27th. That was just you and me. Uh, you and me, so we can't so do that So there's not enough people no matter what. <laughs> so we'll have to wait till the next meeting to approve those. Okay. Well, nobody can approve it but those that were here, right? Right. Okay, right. you can. So we can form. approve. We have to approve it. We have to approve the, the, the yeah. end we're last week. Oh, we're the only two here. Oh, we're we're two people right, here. So, we're, yeah. so we can approve that. Yeah. yeah. You have a majority. I mean, <laughs> by default, we have to be allowed to approve that. Pam, if there's only two that? of us. Yeah, I'll second that. And, okay. Yeah. All right. We will approve the minutes for March 27th. Uh, the next meeting is April 29th, work session. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to adjourn tonight? Meeting. I make the motion to adjourn. All, All in favor? Second. Aye. 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 <laughs>